Good morning and welcome. We're so glad that you've joined us today. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Today we continue the Easter season as we celebrate the second Sunday of Easter, and we continue to rejoice that Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. And with our hearts and our lives, we joyfully sing, Alleluia. Let's begin our worship. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We speak responsibly Psalm 148. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise him in the heights. Praise him, all his angels. Praise him, all his hosts. Praise him, sun and moon. Praise him, all you shining stars. Praise him, you highest heavens. And you waters above the earth. Let them praise the name of the Lord. For he commanded, and they were created. And he established them forever and ever. He gave a decree, and it shall not pass away. Praise the Lord from the earth. You great sea creatures and all deeps, fire and hail, snow and mist, stormy wind fulfilling his word, mountains and all hills, fruit trees and all cedars, beasts and all livestock, creeping things and flying birds, kings of the earth and all peoples, princes and all rulers of the earth, young men and maidens together, old men and children. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for his name alone is exalted. His majesty is above earth and heaven. He has raised up a horn for his people. Praise for all his saints. 
for the people of Israel who are near to him. Praise the Lord. Glory Glory be to to the the Father, and to the Son, and to the the Holy Spirit, Spirit, as it was was in the beginning, beginning, is now, now, and and will be be forever. forever. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, grant that we who have celebrated the Lord's resurrection may by your grace confess in our life and conversation that Jesus is Lord and God, through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first lesson is from Acts, chapter 4. The full number of those who believed were of one heart and soul, and no one said that any of the things that belonged to him was his own, but they had everything in common. And with great power, the apostles were giving their testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. There was not a needy person among them, for as many as were owners of lands or houses sold them, and brought the proceeds of what was sold and laid it at the apostles' feet. And it was distributed to each as any had need. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. is from 1st John chapter 1. That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we looked upon and have touched with our hands, concerning the word of life, the life was made manifest, and we have seen it, and testify to it, and proclaim to you the eternal life, which was with the Father, and was made manifest to us. That which we have seen and heard, we proclaim also to you, so that you too may have fellowship with us. And indeed, our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. We are writing these things so that our joy may be complete. This is the message we have heard from him and proclaimed to you, that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. If we say we have fellowship with him while we walk in the darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus his Son cleanses us from all sin. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. My little children, I am writing these things to you so that you may not sin. But if anyone does sin, We have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. He is the propitiation for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 20th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. On the evening of that day, the first day of the week, the doors being locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came to them and stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, even so I am sending you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of anyone, they are forgiven. If you withhold forgiveness from anyone, it is withheld. Now Thomas, one of the twelve, called the twin, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see in his hands the marks of the nails, and place my finger into the mark of the nails, and place my hand into his side, I will never believe. Eight days later, his disciples were inside again, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands, and put out your hand and place it on my side. Do not disbelieve but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of the disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may believe in that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Welcome to God's house, and isn't it beautiful? Today's gospel was set in the upper room, where Jesus appeared to ten of the disciples at one time. A little bit later, Thomas came to the upper room, and the ten disciples were explaining that they had seen Jesus. Thomas wanted evidence. It's a lot like me. I need evidence to believe some things. Like the tree behind me, when we first planted it, it's called a hybrid and it was self, it's self-pollinating and we were told it'll produce fruit. Several years went by, no fruit. Last year, I decided that this is the final year. We gotta see something. It flowered. Big, just like other years. And this time, some fruit has appeared. We have avocados. Thomas is not unlike me, or I'm not unlike Thomas, where I have to have evidence. He needed evidence. And Jesus appeared to Thomas and showed him the evidence. And Thomas proclaimed, my Lord and my God. He believed. It's a lot like me. I often need evidence in order to believe something. But in this case, I have Thomas's evidence to believe that Jesus rose for me.
dearly loved and precious children of God, brothers and sisters in Christ, grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our risen and reigning Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. As many of you may be aware, the Sunday after Easter Sunday, sometimes referred to as the quiet Sunday. Maybe that's understandable. After all of the excitement and energy of the Lenten season, and then Holy Week and its special services, and in the glorious celebration of our Lord's resurrection on Easter Day, well, for many people, it almost seems as if that Sunday after Easter is a little anticlimactic. But I can assure you that it is anything but that. For we continue the Easter season, we continue with great joy and high delight to celebrate the resurrection of our Lord Jesus from the dead and the new and eternal life we have by God's grace through faith in his name. But just in case anybody is tempted to be a little lax today, let me start off today by beginning with a little bit of a simple quiz, just for fun. You know how many states have on their license plate uh, a motto that reflects the theme of that state? Not all of them. California just has California written in script across the bottom of the plate. But many states have their state's motto or theme on, in, printed on their plate. So let's see how well you do with some of the states and their plates. I'll start off with some easy ones. Which state is the Aloha state? Hawaii, right? Sure. How about the Grand Canyon State? Arizona, right? The Sunshine State? Florida. The Lone Star State? Texas. The Land of Enchantment. I always like that. New Mexico, right? The Empire State. New York, America's Dairyland, the state of my birth, Wisconsin, land of Lincoln, Illinois, the land of 10,000 lakes, Minnesota. And now for the state that is probably best known for Describing human nature, which one is the show me state? That's right, Missouri. In the heartland of America, those honest folks in Missouri say, if you want me to believe it, then show me. Or I have to see it before I'll believe it. Now, I don't think that St. Thomas ever visited Missouri, but I think there was a little bit of Missouri attitude in Thomas, and if we're honest, in all of us as well. After Thomas heard from the other disciples that the risen Christ had appeared to them, well, he was a little bit skeptical. That sounded to him to be a little bit too great to actually be true. Thomas told his friends, his brothers in Christ, I'm going to have to see that to believe it. Or as he put it, unless I see in his hands the mark of the nails, 
and place my finger into the mark of the nails and place my hand into his side, I will never believe. Now, we've come to refer to Thomas as doubting Thomas. But the truth of the matter is, Thomas was only asking for the same verification that the other apostles had already experienced on that first Easter evening when Jesus appeared to them in the upper room and Thomas was not with them. Truth be told, people haven't changed much since the days of Thomas. Some people today hesitate to believe in God because they can't see him. And they certainly don't understand how and why he works the way he does in our world today. These people seem to take the position that if they can't see it, and if they can't understand it, and if they can't explain it, then they're not going to believe it. Of course, we enjoy watching high-definition TV and driving sophisticated cars and carrying our smartphones around and using them all the time. But if we can't understand or explain how our own smartphone works, then how in the world can we explain or understand the inner workings and mind of the Almighty God? Thankfully for Thomas and for all of those like Thomas, God is a lot of patience with show me kind of people. And God himself shows himself to us. So Jesus came to his disciples on that first Easter evening, showed them his hands and his side, greeted them with his peace, ate with them, fellowshiped with them, assured them of his real and living resurrection presence. And because Thomas was not with them on that first Easter evening, the following Sunday evening, Jesus appeared to them again, and this time Thomas was with them. Jesus began by sharing again his peace be with them, that his peace filled them with hope and joy in the power of his presence and the reality of his resurrection. And then Jesus spoke directly to Thomas. Put your finger here and see my hands. And put out your hand and place it in my side. Do not be disbelieving, but believe. How loving and gracious Jesus is with those of us who are slow of heart to believe, slow to see, and slow to understand. Jesus didn't condemn Thomas for his doubt and his lack of faith based on his brother's word, but he took Thomas where he was and lifted him up by the power of his word and the gracious invitation to place his trust in the risen and living Christ. Jesus invited Thomas to believe, and then he would truly see. To believe God's word is to see God present and at work for us. It's comforting to know that Jesus deals with us in much the same way. He comes to us where we are, sometimes questioning, sometimes doubting, often weak in faith, wondering where God is and what he's doing and why he's working the way he is. And still he comes to us and strengthens our faith through his word and lifts us up to a place of stronger faith and trust 
in the power of his presence and the reality and truth of his word to us. The world says seeing is believing. But the Bible says believing is seeing. When by God's grace we believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, we have life in his name. And we see God's gracious hand of blessing at work in every area of our lives. Whether or not we right now fully understand or comprehend what God is doing or why he's doing it, we believe his promise to be with us always and to work in all things for our good and his glory. Believing is seen. Believing in him who died for our sins and rose again for our justification enables us by God's grace and through his word to see that he works in all things for us and for our salvation. May God bless our believing that we may see God at work for us in love. In the name of Jesus, amen. Now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, Keep our hearts and our minds through faith in Christ Jesus to life eternal. Amen. Pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Heavenly Father, by the resurrection of your Son, you adopt all who believe in him. Receive us as your newborn children and nourish our faith by the pure spiritual milk of your word that we may dwell in your presence forever. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful Father, as your people are united in the common life and love of our Savior, grant that we would share that life and love with those in need. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, your peace flows from the risen and glorified wounds of Christ through your church and into the lives of all your faithful people. Bless and direct us that your forgiveness would be freely shared in our lives and that we would live with others in your peace. Lord, in your mercy, 
hear our prayer. Almighty God, you appoint rulers and officials for the sake of order and peace. Bless those you have placed in authority over us in federal, state, and local governments. Give to them the desire to serve with integrity and honor and to work for the benefit of all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, we praise your Son's resurrection from the dead and draw strength from his ascension before you, where he ever stands for us as our own high priest. Have mercy on the sick and those in any need, including Justin Polin, who is recovering at home from a car accident on Monday, Nancy Keep, who remains hospitalized, Joan Nelson, Tom Poole, Eleanor Tyson, and George Van Fossen, who continue in recovery, and Alex Webster, who is on hospice care. Grant to them the comfort of your presence and bless them with healing and strength according to your will. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Comfort those who mourn with the truth of Christ's empty tomb, that in the midst of their grief they may abide in the hope of his resurrection. Uphold them in faith as they await the day when you will wipe every tear from all faces. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Taught by our Lord and trusting his promises, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Receive the blessing of our Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and grant you his peace. Amen. Amen.